So I just want to make this clear if anybody can answer my is today like the uh New Year Sunday? Oh, oh. Cause I, people, I kept asking me, you know how people celebrate the Sunday after the New Year. So, so I said, no, we already. If New Year fall, falls on falls on on Sunday, then that is New Year Sunday. So it's, they said, no, it's supposed to be like a week after. That's the anyway. So if anybody knows what it is, let me know. Because you know, our back home we have Christmas Day and then we have Christmas Sunday, right? People always celebrate the Sunday too. So I'm like, um, I, don't, I, I think we already got it. We Christmas fell on Sunday, New Year fell on Sunday, so it's already taken care of. Uh, yeah. Maybe, 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 uh, you know, but that's, you know. And I, I, I tell you, people celebrated that Sunday after New Year's every year in my country. Yeah, like, um, every year. On New Year's Day, when we were coming to church, uh, somebody asked Brock Safa, did he go to the cross um, Passover, I don't know. Yeah, Passover. The cross, Sunday, crossover Sunday. Crossover Sunday. So, yes. So, but why are you going back this morning? You are already there Sunday morning. Because if I said, no, today is Sunday. We go to church on Sunday. I'm telling you, African people always made sure they celebrate that Sunday after New Year's. That's, they, that's what they call um, New Year's Sunday. And then the, Christ, the Sunday after Christmas, they say that's Christmas Sunday. Because it's been almost 16 years, we have never celebrated Christmas on Sunday, on New Year's on Sunday. So I guess everybody now is kind of confused, you know, global warming. So we'll see. All right, all right, all right, already. Now, let us see. We are still on page nine, lesson two, right? So who can tell us what we talked about? Um, last week because we didn't finish we started and we stopped uh where did we stop uh verse 10 we stopped at verse 10. for those of you who are not here can we just you know we had some things that were highlighted one of them was um david wanted to build a, a house for god and we, uh, we, uh, we picked up from that passage that before you do anything for God, you want to ask him because you don't know he might have a different plan, right? That's one thing that we learned from that, right? And then we, we, um, he, uh, we also learned that um, we have to be careful because some of these um, elaborate churches and decorative churches that you see out there, you know, you don't know the hands that builds that church. Because we talked about the reason why God did not let David build a house for him was because of what? He had blood in his hand. So just don't look at any church out there and say, oh, that is so beautiful. You don't know what, how the people got the money or how they, they ended up deciding to build a church. Some people, everybody have their own reason why they want to build a church, right? So we already knew David was not a man of peace. He was a man of war. And God is not going to let somebody who um, doesn't have peace, you know, build a house for him, right? So we, we, we learned that that's what the thing was. And then we also talked about uh, David wanting to build this house for God. Um, you know, God has always been with his children. He never complained. They were moving him from place to place, right? So what did he say? He said, you know... Um, well, I've never asked for somebody to build a house for me. Why does this man want all of a sudden now to build a house? Uh, you know, does he want to take the fame and the glory to say I'm the one that did it? You know how some people do something like, you know, for the eye sin of men? It's not like really they, it, it, you know, they, they, they want to. Because now he's, he's got everything. God really favored this guy because he was after the heart of God. But because of God's promises to, to him, everything that he did, God said, you know, I will take care of you, but I'm not going to let you do that. So God said, I will, what, what did God say? I will pick the time and the place. And when I pick that time and the place, it will be a place where you, you, there will be no problem, right? Okay, so now let us see, let us uh, join the, the, the book again. We, we, are, we stopped at uh, 10, right? That's 10. So... Why? Oh, yeah, we'll just just let's just let's go back to ten. 
go back to 10. Verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in the place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Okay, let's see, read 11. Also, add 11 to it. 11. And as since the time that I command judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. Okay, so what do we understand from these two verses, 10 and 11? You know, we have been talking about, you know, if you want to do something, you want to ask God first, right? Because maybe he has a plan, right? So what are we seeing here in 10? He's saying something. Because sometimes you want to do things, but it's really not what God wants you to do. He has another plan, he yes. Has plan. Mm -hmm. So it's good for you to ask Sim. maybe... Let's say, oh, I want to go plant a church in Brooklyn mm -hmm. or in Queens, but God don't want that. God don't want it at that particular time in that location where you want to go to go do. I know it's the work of God, but we have to do it. As still got to ask own, we still have to ask Him for His own direction, His own wisdom, and how do we really want to go. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So what did he tell what did he tell David? What did he tell the prophet to tell David? He said he said I will pick a place where you don't have to move no more. See, because they were they were moving all the time, right? So he said, Why build a place when we, you know we are not even there yet? Where are we going? This, you know, this, now all of a sudden David wanted to do this now because he was ready, he was comfortable, he was living in a mansion, so he thought now I can, I can, you know, pay attention to God, now I got what I want. So he said, no, 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 I will be the one to pick the place and the time to do this. And, and when I pick that place, he says, um, you will move no more, you see, and there will be no trouble in their lives anymore. So, you see, what is this story teaching us? What is this story teaching us? It's teaching us something. God is trying to tell us something. He says, I will be, because one thing we have to realize when God finds a place for you, this is for us today, children of God. If God has planted you in a place, Stop the running around. Stop going up and down, going to different, different. You hear there's a prophet who is seeing vision over there, you're there. You hear there's a, a, a new United Methodist Church that just opened down the block, you're there. You hear there's a Ladura Church over there, you're there. You, you, you hear that, that, that is uh, All Saints over there, you're there. You are bouncing up and down. So God said, I will pick a place for you. So if God has picked a place for you, he will give you rest. Because sometimes when we go up and down, running up and down, looking for all these churches, guess what? God can be looking for us and he can't even find us. He can't even find us. Yeah, because then you're going to end up in a place where you're not wanted. You understand? And then now you, you have left where he sent you. You see? We have to be careful because most of these churches that you see, God is not, he is not there. It's not there. All these pretty, pretty churches that people are running after, God has left the building. Or if he was there, because what is in their hands, God already departed. Yeah. Some of them, their hands are stained with blood. And I have to say one thing I want to draw your attention to. Just because it says blood doesn't mean that that's the only way. That that's the only way your hands can be stained with blood. No, 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 not because you kill a human being. There are so many things that we have to be careful what we do. Stabbing somebody in the back, that's blood in your hands. Because you don't know you have messed up that person's character. Gossiping all the time to one another, bringing somebody's reputation down, you know, crying people down, making them feel, yes, ma'am, yes, my sister, thank you very much. Ganging up on somebody. These are all ways. It doesn't mean that you have to physically kill somebody to, 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 for them to say that you have blood in your hands. No. If you crucify somebody at work, snitching on them at work, you have blood in your hands. 
Because why? You have messed up that person's character and that person can get fired. So all that person's problem now, you, you caused it. So don't even think that only because David was, um, you know, a, a man of war or killing people, that's the only reason. No, there's so many. For us today, we might not, we don't have to go to war. Remember that. So our own war that we are fighting is fighting, is, is to stop, you know, crucifying other people. Is to stop talking about other people. Okay? Let us keep that in mind. And, and know that some of these buildings that we are running into, God left already. Okay? So there was one thing that God said here. Yeah, I don't want us to miss that. He said um, in 11, I said, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. He will make thee a house. You know, this is King James. So some of the English there, you know, it, it's it's kind of like um, uh, when you get the understanding of it, you will love it. He said, he will make thee a house. What does that mean? What did God meant when he said to David that I will make thee a house? Now, David wanted to build a house, but God said, no, I will make thee a house. What does that mean? What does that mean? Yes, you see, God. The, the title of this, the, the passage says, "God's promise." Yes, we are serving a covenant-keeping God. Whatever He says He will do, that is what we do, despite the fact of what David had done, right? Okay. So He said, "I will." What, but what does it mean? In, in 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 if you want to understand, He's trying to tell, "I will build you a dynasty," wherein. Your generations, and because when God bless you, He bless you, He did. Even to your tenth generation, this is what is going on here. He did. He wasn't only telling them. He said, "I will build you. I will be. I will build you a ruling house." That means nobody is going to rule over these people except somebody from your lineage. If it's not, if it's not your children, it will be somebody from your lineage. It will, I said, and I will reign over this kingdom forever and ever. He said, I will be the one, and this, and and instead of the Lord, the Lord said, I will build you a dynasty. We hear all the time people talking about dynasty. That's like a company that that is a family-owned business that has grown so big that the entire family is working for that company. This is how God has put it to David. And that even if you're not here no more, your generation and generation to come will enjoy it. So he, he's keeping that promise. So let's see what, uh, 12? 12, 12. 12 and 13. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. 13. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Okay, so we did touch on this uh, a little bit, like they said. So, uh, like I said, uh, thy seed after thee. What does that mean? He will be succeeded by his son. Who is this son? Yeah. So who was the one that uh, God was talking about? God was talking about Solomon. God was talking about, he said... Thy seed after thee. You see what it says? And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed. That means one of your children will proceed out of thy bowels. So what does that mean? Uh, I know this English, some of us are not too accustomed to talking like this. But you say, out of thy bowels. The one you gave back to. to, yes. And that's what the, the book is telling about. God is going to take one of his children and make... At, and establish him. And when God said, I'm going to establish his kingdom, that means God is going to bless him. He's going to be blessed going and blessed coming. God said, and I will take care of him. I will abide over this kingdom and that nothing will touch him. And I will also um, um, take him as my child. You hear what he says? He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. You see that? He said, I will abide over his house. I will bless him. I will make him the king forever. I will be there for I will be for him in anything that he's doing. And I will make him my child. Let's see what 14 says. 14. 14. I will be his father, 
and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. You see that? Let us be children when it comes to God. Act like a child. He's our father. You understand? Do you see how he's standing up for Solomon? Do you see that? He said, I will chastise him if he does something wrong. This is what the Lord is trying to tell us, children of God. He said, I will build a dynasty. Solomon is David's son. And it will surprise you to know that Solomon is David's love child. So it doesn't have to be that uh, 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 child in, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your house that, you know, it, it was his love. So we all know David cheated when he would, we all know about that cheating that he did, right? So, so what he's saying now, he said, he said, I will bless him because he had made a promise to him. He's a covenant keeping God. What he said he would do, that is what he would do. Despite all the facts. But let's see, did Solomon uh, uh, own up to his responsibilities? Because God said, what I'm going to do, I will chastise him if he doesn't keep up with himself. But how can God, you know, God, he, what did he also say? He said, um, he shall be, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. Oh, what does that mean, the rod of men? I want us just to look at that. The rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. That means if God said, I will chasten you with the rod of men, you better take that one. I will take that one. Because at least it's man, right? Because when God is ready to chastise you, it's not pretty. It's not pretty, children of God. It's not pretty. So God said, I will chasten him with the rod of men. That means I will let his own people fight against him. And that's exactly what happened to him. This man had 700 wives, 300 concubines, and they eventually took his eyes away from God. What manner of man is this? So what, what was this man doing with 1,000 wives? Come on now. Does that even make sense? No. no. So we have to be careful. If God said, I will, I will let uh, mankind chase in you, you better accept that one because I know for sure, for sure. I'm, not, I'm telling you this. I tell you every time when I stand there, I tell you the truth. God slapped me one time and I made a mistake. I slipped. He slapped me the second time. And I'm telling you, after I woke up after that sleep, I never slept again. And I don't believe. I will sleep again. Because what I experienced those, the first time and the second time, he called me to attention. Hmm. I knew I have to wake up and smell the coffee. So be careful God don't slap you. Because when he slap you, believe you me, you will not forget. It's not like when my dad used to slap you, he used to leave a print on your face. Or wherever he hits you, there's going to be a print. So be careful when your father slaps you, he's trying to call your attention, okay? So this is what he did to Saul. And Saul did not even own up. So let's see what 15 says. Is it 15? Yeah. 15. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? You see, you see what happened to Saul, right? Did God have mercy on him? Did God think twice about taking any actions against him? No. He didn't say, oh, oh be, just be, because I had made a promise, so I'm good. No. God took care of Saul in a twinkle of an eye. But because, as I said, when God promised you, when God said, I have your back, he has your back. Okay? So let us stop moving, running around from one church to the other. If he has planted your foot here, hmm? and this is where you are getting fed, you better stay here. All these fancy, fancy churches you see out there, don't be fooled. God is not in it. In Kabul, he left. God left. He's not there. The Holy Spirit is not there anymore. So let us be careful, children of God. So as with Solomon, we saw that God is saying that regardless of all these things that he has done, hmm? He said, I'm not going to deal with him like I dealt with Saul. Right? So he really did, really, really, really um, 
is trying to tell us that he is our father. You know, the reason why God is so, you know, David won the heart of God. He was the first man to ask for repentance. He asked God to forgive him. He said, God, forgive me for what I've done. God accepted him. But he said, because your hands are stained with blood, I promise to do everything for you. But, but, you will not be the one to enjoy it. Your children's children will be the one to enjoy it. Your line, uh, lineage. So let us see what uh, 16 and the last verse says. 16. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Mm -hmm. What is that saying? That's our last verse. Yes. Anything else? God said, I will never leave you, not forsake him. That's what God told him. Even though you have done all these things, but my mercy shall not depart away from him. As I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever and ever. That means God is trying to tell him that even all of this, but I will never leave this house. I will never leave this dynasty that I built and I will never forsake them. Children of God, what this this is this should be this should be making us say to God, I will never leave you. What about our promise to him? Hmm? What is your promise to God today? He already told us that he will never leave us or forsake us, right? How about you making that promise to him? Yeah, look at everything that he has done for you. I think that should be our prayer. Because I know I always say, I will, God, I will never leave you or forsake you. I turned it around. I use it in my prayers. That I will never leave you or forsake you. Because when I think of where he has brought me from, my very soul just have to sing hallelujah all the time. Okay? Because he has been good to us. Our Lord has been so good to us. His promises that he made to us are yea and amen. What he said he will do, that is what he will do. He is a covenant keeping God. So children, I want us to include that in our prayers from now on. That Lord, whatsoever you have done for me is uncountable. Even if I have 10,000 tongues, it is not enough. So I will never leave you and I will never... Let us be the one to say that because he first said it. So let us turn it around. Because God always like when you quote him or when you say, God, this is what you said. This is what you promised. So when we tell him that, Lord, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He knows you are understanding him. Okay? So let us remember as we are learning now, we understand that we have to think about anything that we are doing for God, we have to ask him. Number two, don't look at all these fancy, fancy churches in and see and think that there is something going on when there is nothing going on. Don't be fooled. Don't go. Don't be running around from uh, Aladuga Church to uh, 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 Holy Ghost Fire and, and, and something or whatever they call them churches out there. Because if you are so busy running around, God is going to be looking for you and you cannot find him. He cannot find you. Because he's going to be dizzy now because he'll be like, where is Sister Joyce? Yeah? Sometimes you'll, you'll be sitting in the wrong pew. He'll be looking. This woman is sitting here all the time now today. I came to bless her. She's not here. So be careful. Be careful. All right? All right. I hope I've said something today that you will take home and remember. Don't forget to let the Lord know that you will never leave him and you will never forsake him. Okay? In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you all the adoration. You alone are worthy to be praised in our door. We thank you for this moment. We thank you that we bring the rest of the service, the sermon, and the choir into your hands today, Father Lord. Take absolute control over everything today in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we say thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name we pray. Amen. Amen.